Praise be to the Lord, brothers and sisters, wherever you are watching us from, I want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you? I'm coming to you from Lutheran Church International in Maradaima, uh, a place where everybody is somebody, a surgery where all of us, we are subjected not for any other business, but just to worship our God and adore his name because he is a gracious father. I thank God for this opportunity that he has given me that I may share his word with you wherever you are watching me from. Uh, God is good and he means well for us. And his purpose is to keep us safe, is to keep us alive, is to keep us in his shadows. Um, today I want us to hear what God wants us to hear. And before I do this, I welcome you all to this telecast. I want to read the word of God from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. Then we shall continue from there. And let us read together. My child, never forget the things I have told you. Store my commandments in your heart. If you do this, you live many years, and your life will be satisfying. Never let the loyalty and the kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will then you'll find favor with both God and the people, and you will uh, and you'll earn a good reputation. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Verse 6. Seek, seek his will in all you do, and he will show you with path to take. Let us pray together. My Father and my God, I thank you this very moment that you have given us, my Father, to hear from thee. I've read your word from the book of Proverbs. Lord, I pray that, Lord, this word is going to help us, is going to correct us, is going to rebuke us as our church. I want to commit my viewers wherever they are, that, Lord, as they listen to me, as they listen to the everlasting mass of God, their lives will be never the, be the same again, O oh dear God. Father, I thank you, everlasting mass, because I know and I believe your word cannot come to your people in vain. There is something that, Lord, we have prepared for all of us that, my Father, at the end of this session, Lord, it will be of importance in our families, in our businesses, O oh God, in our country, and more so, my Lord, in our lives, O oh God. I thank you, Father, and I worship you. I want to commit myself unto thee. May you use me as your vessel. May you use me as, a, as an instrument that, Lord, may produce what is in me to the people, dear God. I thank you, Father, and I worship you. It's through the name of the Father, the Son, and all spirit, I do pray and believe. Amen. Praise be to the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, I've read the word of God from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. I want to speak about trust in the Lord. I'm not speaking about trust in man. I don't want to speak about trust in your possession. I don't want to speak about, about uh, trust in whatever you have. Praise be to the Lord. But I want to speak about trust in the Lord. And before we come to chapter 3 of Proverbs, I want to give you some highlights of the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, the author is King Solomon. King Solomon had all things as a king. King Solomon he had ability to do greater things. But there is one thing that he realized that without God, he was nothing. And that is why he is bringing at once the issue of the matter of putting our trust in our Lord. Our Lord is our creator. The Lord is our, our, our father. The Lord is our provider. And that is why as a church, as a people, as a nation, 
as a family, we are obligated and we have a duty to put our trust in the Lord. Because in Lord is where we will get all that we need. When you trust the Lord, the Lord will provide over your life. When you pray, we trust in the Lord, the Lord will come down and meet you at the point of your need. When you read chapter 1 of the book of Proverbs, You'll find the book, and the chapter 1 is giving us a foundation, a very good foundation about true prosperity and life, which is wisdom. Praise be to the Lord. The author of the King Solomon is giving us a foundation of true prosperity. Remember, if you are a Bible reader, you'll find that Solomon was one of the guys who was so rich in those days. But he's trying to bring into us the matter of the issue of true prosperity and life. What does this mean? It is just so that there is a prosperity which is not true. There is a prosperity which is fake. There is prosperity which is not lying. And Solomon is telling us that true prosperity and life is wisdom. Praise be to the Lord. This wisdom I'm talking about is the word of God. What the Bible is saying in the book of, the book of James, chapter 1, uh, verse 5. Uh, chapter 1, verse, verse 5. What the Bible is saying, it says this. Even of you lack of wisdom, you should ask God. This tells us wisdom is something so important in, in the life of a Christian. And I've said this wisdom I'm talking about is the word of God. If you don't have the word of God, my dear brother, my sister, even if I talk about trust and you don't have the word of God, maybe you'll not be in a position to exercise your faith, to, you'll not be in a position to trust or to put trust, trust in the Lord. Why? Because you don't know this Lord. Why? Because you, without the word of God, you may not be in a position to understand well and to understand the nature of our God. Praise be to the Lord. James is saying this. He's telling us this. Even of, if any of you lack of wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding for. I want to challenge you, my brother, my sister, wherever you are, it is your time now to evaluate your life, to evaluate your, 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 your surrounding and see whether you have this wisdom within your life. And if you don't have, the Bible is telling us, if you don't have wisdom, you shall ask God who gives wisdom generously without finding any fault. Praise be to the Lord. And if you have this wisdom within your life, the wisdom that Solomon is trying to introduce us in, my dear brother, my sister, your life will never be the same again. Your life will be totally complete, uh, changed. Your life will totally mourn, mounted. Praise be to the Lord. And when you come to chapter 2 of the book of Proverbs, the King Solomon, the heart of this book, is trying to tell us, is trying to show us how we should receive this wisdom, how we should receive this this true prosperity and the life, which is wisdom. Praise be to the Lord. And now when we come to the chapter 3, which where I have read, King Solomon is telling us on how we should not forget when the prosperity comes in our, in our lives, when the true prosperity comes in our lives, when life comes to have a place within our lives, when the wisdom of the, uh, finds a place in our lives, when the word of God finds a place in our lives, we should not forget where this prosperity came from. Praise be to the Lord. Because many times as human beings, we forget to understand where the prosperity comes from. We focus a lot and we magnify what God has blessed us with and we forget about the blesser. We forget about the, our creator. We forget about where prosperity has come from. Praise be to the Lord. And this is what our our our, 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 our brother, the King Jesus, King Solomon is trying to tell us, is trying to give us, is trying to introduce in our lives that we should not forget where our prosperity comes from.
voice be to the Lord. I know and I know. Wherever you are, you are maybe you're asking yourself, where is this kind of prosperity my Lord is talking about? I'm talking about prosperity that is within your life. Perhaps I know and I know. Today you are alive, and that is why you're watching me. You are prosper, you 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 are that prosperity, you are prosperity of life, you are prosperity of wisdom, and that is what you should embrace. Praise be to the Lord. When you read verse 1 of chapter 3, Solomon is saying this, My child, never get the things I have told you. Store my, commandment in, my commandments in your heart. Solomon is speaking on behalf of our God. And God is told, telling us, My son, my daughter, don't forget what these things I have told you. Don't forget about my teachings. My teachings are saying this. Live Godly life. Don't forget to live Godly life. My teachings are this. This is what God is telling us. Don't be a fornicator. Live a leather. Live, a, live away a life without fornication. My, the, 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 the power of God is telling us. Don't be a liar. God wants us to be true. God wants us to be pure. God wants us to be righteous. And that is God God is telling us to this today. He's telling us, my child, my son, my daughter, don't forget my teachings. What are these teachings? The word of God. Don't forget the word of God. The word of God is lying. The word of God is pure. The word of God is Russian. So if the word of God is Russian, and if we have that word in your, in your life, if we have that wisdom, you need to live as part the word of God. Because the word of God is pure, live a pure life. Because the word of God is righteous, live a righteous life. Because the word of God is true, live a true life. Because the word of God is love, live la, a, la, la, a lovely life. Praise be to the Lord. The word of God, it, the, the, the word of God, are instruction of instructions that come from the word, from God, that come from the Lord. My dear brother, my dear sister, today, today, the Lord is telling you, don't forget my teaching. Things. Keep them in your heart. Keep them in your heart. Solomon is encouraging us. Solomon is telling us, all of us, we should keep his commandment. We should keep the commandments of God in our hands. We should keep the commandments of God in our brains. We should keep commandments of God in our souls. Because the commandment of God, it, the commandments of God will tell us, will show us what is right to do and what is wrong that we should not do. Praise be to the Lord. And when you come to verse 2, what the Bible says in the verse 2, if you do this, you live many years and your life will be satisfied. Praise be to the Lord. My dear brother, my dear sister, wherever you are, I want to submit this to you this, this, this today, that if you do, if you keep the commandments of God, if you keep the law of the Lord, if you keep the wisdom of the Lord, in your heart, the Bible is telling us this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfied. My dear brother, my dear sister, I want to tell you this, I want to tell you this, this today, that we are living a satisfactory life because we are not keeping the commandments of God in our lives. We are living in a, in a natural way. We are living a sinful life. We are living a life that is not pleasing God. From today I want to challenge you. From today I want to challenge you. My dear brother, my dear sister, live life that is what of God the, 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 the word of Christ. Live like that is pleasing God. Live like that is 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 a, is a divine the kingdom of God. Praise be to the Lord. God wants us to live, to hide his word in our hands and walk in his ways. My brother and brother, my dear sister, God wants us to keep his words, to keep his commandments in our hands. And after keeping the commandments of God in our hands, we walk together with him. Why do we walk together God with our God? Why do we walk together Christ? Because Christ will show us the way. Because God will show us the way. Because God will keep us in a, in a place where all people in this world will understand truly these are sons of God. Praise be to the Lord. God's laws and principles cannot be halted at all. God's, God's, uh, God's law and principles cannot be changed. 
That is what Solomon is telling us. Keep this commandment in my heart, in your heart. Keep this word of the Lord in your hands. Because the Lord's commandments are principles. And as we all know, God, principles cannot be altered. Principles cannot be changed. They remain the same. Praise be to the Lord. And the Bible is telling us, if we do this, we will have the chance to live a long life. Let us read the book of Psalm. Let me read a, 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 a principle somewhere in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 1. What the Bible say? Paul is saying things. He's telling, the, he's telling us this. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the commandment which I promise. With promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well with you. And you will have a long life on earth. Praise be to the Lord. Paul is telling us, children, obey your parents for this is the right thing. Honor your father and mother, for this the first commandment the promise. And if you do this, you shall live a long life. And this is what Solomon is telling us in the book of Proverbs. He's saying this. Solomon is telling us, if you keep the commandment, the principle of the Lord in your life, in your heart, you shall live a long life. What does this tell us? My dear brother, my dear sister, we are dying young. We are dying a pre premature death because we are not keeping the promises of the Lord. We are not keeping the laws of the Lord in our hearts. I want to challenge you today, to, uh, the, today, today that my dear brother, Keep God's commandments in your hands so that you may have a place in your life to trust in him. Praise be to the Lord. I want us as a church. I want us as a nation. I want us as a, as a, as a, as a the, the, the world to trust in the Lord. Because the Lord, we shall have all that we need. In the Lord, we will be, we will be blessed. In the Lord, we shall be lifted. In the Lord, whichever calamity you are passing through, God is about to take us out of that calamity. Praise be to the Lord. When you, read the, you continue to read the word of God, the Bible is telling us this. When you do what is right, it brings you peace. Praise be to the Lord. Doing, putting, keeping the commandments of God in your life is doing right. Because having the commandment of God in your heart, in your heart, you'll do what is right. And doing right will give you peace. Peace which transcends all understanding. Peace which brings with peace which will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Praise be to the Lord. My dear brother, my dear sister, wherever you are, can you please keep the word of God? Can you please do what is right so that you may have peace? I know and I know things are not doing well in our lives. Things are not favorable. But I want to tell you, with the word of God in your life, with the wisdom of God in your life, you shall have peace which transcends the, the, to sense all understanding, praise be to the Lord. The peace will peace which will guard your hearts and the minds in Christ Jesus. Praise be to the Lord. Bonus if you will. What the Bible is saying in verse 3 and verse 4. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Don't let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Praise be to the Lord. Don't let kindness, love, loyalty leave you. Tie them around your neck. What is the neck that the, the word of God that, that Solomon is talking about? He's talking about putting the word of God in your heart. Put the word of God in the template of your soul. Put the word of God in your mind. Whatever you do, think what is right. Praise be to the Lord. According to the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 2, what the Bible talk about? The Bible talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And kindness is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Faithfulness is one of the, is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to the Lord. And this what the Bible is telling us. We should embrace kindness. We should embrace loyalty because doing that, we shall have what God wants us, us to have. Praise be to the Lord. Let kindness and loyalty love, love and truth that from God be part of us. Praise be to the Lord. Let kindness, my dear brother, let loyalty, loyal love 
and through that come from God be part of you. Because having this, you have all that what God wants you to have. Praise be to the Lord. Having this in your life, you have what God wants you to have. Because having love, you like God will be pleased with you. Having kindness, God will be pleased with you. Having truth in your life, God will be pleased with you. We ought to be merciful. For we will obtain mercy in the time of need. Praise be to the Lord. The book in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 7. What the Bible say? Let us be merciful, because we'll be, we'll be shown mercy. Praise be to the Lord. And when you read the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 16, what the Bible say? Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. My dear brother, my dear sister, if you have the word of God in your life, if you embrace the will of God in your life, you have the right, you have the confidence to approach the throne of God with confidence. Praise be to the Lord. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. It is only grace of God. It is only grace that the mercies of God will help us in time of our needs. Praise be to the Lord. To us cannot be enemies are underestimated. It is beyond compromise. My dear brother, my dear sister, as I have told you, let us learn to trust the Lord because the trust we the trust we have in the Lord cannot be underestimated. It, it, it is beyond compromise because trusting the Lord, you will have all that you need. Trust the Lord, the Lord will never fail you. Trust the Lord, will all be, will be always with you. Trust the Lord, will lift you. Trusting the Lord will make you somebody before his eyes and before, uh, before the eyes of men. Praise be to the Lord. My dear brother, my dear sister, not this because it's very important. A truthful person is a person whose character is not and will not be questionable by anybody. Hey, my dear brother, my dear sister, you will embrace the word of God. You will be a true person. Praise be to the Lord. You will be a truthful person. And if you are a truthful person, your character will not be able to be questioned by anybody. I want to challenge you. I want to ask you, is your character today? Be upright. Is your character today? Add to the standard. Is your character today? Please see God. Praise be to the Lord. For us to trust, to have trust in the Lord, we need to shape our characters. We need to shape and shed off what is not godly in our lives and embrace what is godly in our lives. I want to say this. The highest compliment that can be paid a man is to say that he is a man of truth. My dear brother, my dear sister, wherever you are watching me, the compliment that you can give you as a son of God, a compliment that you can give you as a daughter of God, is to say this, to say that you are a true person. Your word can be trusted. Your word can be followed. Your word can be up to standard. Praise be to the Lord. Master truth is the most important character a Christian should have. A Christian should have. You should not let the word of God, which is truth, to live your heart. Praise be to the Lord. Let the word of God have place in your heart. Don't let the wisdom of God, let, don't let the word of God leave your heart, leave your mouth, because the word of God will help you, because the word of God will bless you, because the, Lord, the word of God will heal you, because the word of God will lead your business, because the word of God will some, do something profound and important in your, in, in your heart. What the Bible says in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says this, keep this book of the law always in your lips. Praise be to the Lord. God is telling Joshua, keep this book of the law always on you on, on your on your on your lips, on, on, on other ones, on your mouth. Praise be to the Lord. He my dear brother, my dear sister. You want to be the to be a blessed of God. You want to be lit by the Lord. You want to be expanded by the Lord. Keep the book of the law in your on your on your, on your lips. Praise be to the Lord. Meditate on it day and night. My dear brother, my dear sister, wherever you are, and I believe and I believe, that is why our senior pastors come with this program of telecast every day at six, so that we may reach you, so that we may hear the word of God, so that we may help you to meditate upon the word of God day and night. Every minute, meditate upon the word of God. Every hour, meditate upon the word of God. So that you may be careful to do everything written in, in it. 
and then you will be prosperous and successful. My dear brother, my dear sister, wherever you are, perhaps you are sick, it's only the word of God can heal you. Just trust in the Lord. Wherever you are watching me from and your business not doing well, my dear brother, my dear sister, it's only the word of God that can heal your business. Just trust in the Lord. Perhaps your family is not doing well. Trust in the Lord and meditate upon the word of God every minute. And this word of God shall heal your family. Praise be to the Lord. If you are massive and truthful, we will, we will to get along with not only the men around us, but God as well. Being truthful, uh, truthful being, being somebody who loves God, you will have a good reputation before the eyes of men. And you will also have a, 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 a good reputation before the eyes of God. Let us go to the back of the book of, the, the book, uh, of Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5 and 6. I want to finish from there. Uh, this is where my heart is. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. The Bible is telling us, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. I put down this. Trust in the Lord is only the way we can access God's blessing. Trust in the Lord is only the way, my brother, my dear sister, we can access God's blessings. We do not need to depend on our abilities. We don't, depend, we don't need to depend on our education, on our possession, on our things of this world. Because the Bible is telling us, let us depend let us trust in the Lord. God always embrace us, not on who we are, but just by his grace. Not because of good things that you have done. Trust in the Lord. And the Lord, I want to assure you, will embrace you and whatever you do. When we depend upon our ability, we shall fall very short. We shall fall very soon. We shall fall very short when we depend on men, when we depend on our possession. But when we depend on God, we shall all have all what we need. I, wa I want you to mark this because this is very important. Trust in mean, rely on, depend on, not to any other thing, but to depend on God. Lean means do not depend on your own native instincts. Depend on God. Not, don't depend on native instincts. Don't depend on what is around about you. Don't depend on what you know. And finally, I have said this. Submit to him or acknowledge God, which means having fellowship and intimacy with God in all areas of your life. When you have intimacy with the Lord, when you have fellowship with the Lord, all you are with things shall be well. Trust in the Lord, my dear brother. As I can clear, I want to say this. The source of devoting yourself to the Lord is that God will make the path straight for you. God will make path straight before you. Just trust the Lord, my dear brother. Just believe in the Lord, dear my brother. Because our Lord loves you and he needs you to trust in him. We should praise and that God hallows, my dear brother. It doesn't matter what you are passing through. Trust in the Lord. Wherever, whichever situation you are in, my dear brother, Trust in the Lord and in my Father, who is, I believe, is also your Father, she will never, shall never let you down. Just hang on in this God. Just trust the Lord, and the Lord will do something new in your life. If we will allow God, direct, if we allow God direct your path, we shall walk in light and not stumble and fall. Just allow God to direct you. Just allow God. To walk with you. Give God position. Give God space in your life to walk with you. And the Lord will never, never let you down.